So thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this conference. I never thought that Garage Stories would become an educative platform, but it's becoming an essential pillar to contribute to our mission, which is to build a more inclusive and diverse industry. And before sharing a few tips that we've learned during our journey, um, just a quick recap about Garage Stories was born in 2017 in, in Palo Alto in Silicon Valley. And the initial goal was to bring together creatives and technology so as to explore the potential of emerging media. Since then, we've been organizing labs and workshops all over the world, especially in North America, South America, and, and Europe. And we've been bringing together a more diverse crowd of creatives every time with the goal, as I was saying, to explore the potential of emerging media, but also to build use cases and to push innovation forward. And in a nutshell, I will say that what we do is labs and hackathons around the world, how democratizing access to emerging media and empowering the community and why, because we want to co-create stories for a better future. And we believe that, that stories can only be, be, be told by, by fostering diversity and inclusion in the industry. And, and probably in this talk, I'm going to be focusing mainly on, on the second bubble, on, on the how, how you democratize access to, to these technologies and, and foster this, this inclusion in the community for which education is, is essential. So, so here just sharing a few tips that I sum up in four key learnings. The first one is learn by making mistakes. And this was something that, that was part of the very beginning of our philosophy. We call it garage stories, not because it's a physical space, because it happens in a garage, but it's part of the, of the mindset, the mindset that we don't have engraved a lot a, at all in Spain, where we see mistakes as a big failure and something that, that you should never do. But as I felt in Silicon Valley, you were more allowed to make that mistakes, and especially the whole garage mentality was really inspiring to me. So, so in a way, the, the, the sort of a space we aim to create is a space where people feel free to, to play. Therefore, when you're playing, failing, it's not so important. And when you allow yourself to fail is when you're actually taking risks. And that's when new ideas come, come up. So I could tell you a thousand mistakes that have been done in, in our labs and then how this has eventually helped us grow. There's an image of the first um, garage stories in Palo Alto. We, we, we recorded a few short films in VR and later we validated the assumptions of the creators on how will users interact and engage with the content by opening the, the doors of the different sets in a, in a live theater format. As you can tell, it didn't go as planned at all. Most people felt really uncomfortable joining the table. That's where all the action and actors were. And most people just started like crawling down to the back. And if you can see the faces of some of the people, they're quite surprised or they don't really know what's going on. But this has led us to, to, to learn so much that if we had got it right the first time. Secondly, learn by making a commitment. In all of our labs, we, we accept individual applications and then we match them with, with other people. So, so we've realized that when actually people commit to someone else to, to bringing a project to life, they are more aware of, of everything that they are learning because it becomes a social experience. And since pandemic hit, we've been organizing also some virtual labs which, which they miss this, this human first person experience. But one thing that we did, for example, for the context of our virtual incubator was to match people who were bringing ideas into the incubator with other professionals that were willing to join these existing projects. And the experience was mind blowing. The, the success of the incubator was, was literally based on, on being able to create these, these connections. So people that were locked down at their own homes had the opportunity to meet people from any other part of the world that was passionate about the same things that they were. Third thing is learn by caring. That's something that we've been experiencing a lot this year. This is a, a workshop we did in Barcelona in October where we were working on fostering innovating communication campaigns for three local NGOs. And one of them was Ludalia that works with kids that have some disability. Sorry, not kids, with adults 
because actually they they found out that there is no 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 entertainment no no cultural activities for people about 18 that suffer some sort of disability in the city so that's that's their mission and what we did is that we invited their their users the users of ludalia to join our workshop so the teams that were working on their challenge could actually interact with them and this was really amazing everyone felt so engaged the experience was much more enriching the users of Ludalia felt part of the solution and also the, the teams that were working in, in, in this project, they could see the real need of actually, of actually creating new forms of communicating for educating citizens about this, about this, this situation so they can foster more, more inclusive politics. So this part of being able to, to involve your end user in part of the process is kind of essential and also to learning. Also, learn by teaching. So Einstein said that if you're not able to explain what you do or what you learn to a kid that's five, you probably haven't learned it. And that's something that we've incorporated in all of our workshops. There is a whole process where we go from inspiration, ideation to, to, to building. And, and finally, to communication. We believe that's really important that, that, that we are able to, to share what we've done and also this is a, a great exercise when it comes to, to synthesizing what we've learned. And also here is a, a picture of the mentors that we had at the two incubators that we run for virtual. And, and what we found out is that the mentors became super engaged in the program. And as you can tell, we have the same because they all wanted to repeat, they committed an overwhelming amount of time to helping us, to helping the participants. So I also feel that this, this, this learning experience, it has a, a first part where you take knowledge in, but it has a second really important part where you are actually sharing it and you learn so much by sharing. And I can tell you that I've been running a lot of these, these workshops, how much you learn by, by sharing what you know and, and receiving feedback from people also that come fresh into, the, into this industry. And it's a really, really enriching process, which I think it's, it's, it's mandatory in an emerging industry. So here is how I will sum up my four learnings learned by making mistakes, by making a commitment, by caring, and by teaching. And one, one last thing that I would like to share is that recently I, I was told that how did I manage to, to bring so much girls into my workshops? And I was surprised because actually I wasn't doing any sort of targeted um, marketing when it was coming to the open applications. But I think it's, it's that whenever we, we send out our open calls for the different programs that we do, we focus a lot on the why. So why will you participate? We focus a lot on the problems that we're trying to solve, on the challenges, on, on what, do we want to arrange, what do we want to raise awareness about. And I think that that's really appealing also to bring a more diverse crowd when you talk about the why and not the what that would be the technology. At the end, technology should just be a, a tool, not an end. And so I think in, in a few words, learning should be empowering. And, and one thing that's great about XR is that it's an emerging industry. And I believe that emerging industries are per se empowering because there is no pre-established rules. So you have this blank page in front of you. You have the opportunity to, to design how the industry will, will move forward. And I think that's really attractive for, for a lot of creators. And here sharing a, a capture of some of our tools, all the tools we've designed and all the methodology that we've been building during all this time. They are not thought to tell you how to do it. They are thought to help you ask yourself all the necessary questions so you can find your own answers. And here's just sharing a quote from one of the, the last students that we had at the, at the academy that we organized with virtual. And she told me that she wanted to learn the difference between writing about VR and writing for VR. So I was very happy to, to hear that she was jumping into the arena, to call it in a way. So I encourage you guys to do the same, to, 
to become the, the doer and to start creating, to, to, to take learning as a lifelong experience. And I look forward to meeting you on the 16th of December to answer all your questions. Thank you so much.